Okay, welcome back. 2019, new academic here. Fantastic to be here. Uh, fantastic to have this man in here. So, Will Robbins, how are you? Great, Dave. How are you? Pleasure to be here, first of all. Thanks for having me in. No problem, mate. No problem. L- long time listener. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's listen. an honour. Oh, unbelievable, man. It's great to have you. Uh, the um, the reason that we wanted to have you, and obviously you got in contact with myself and Chris and we were chatting about our personal development club and we were about to have a series on personal development doing what we've done inside the school and what we felt uh, students could enact in their Leaving Cert. But coming from myself at 30 and, and Chris at uh, X years of age, maybe yeah. we're not as relatable to, to other students as, as, say, yourself because you've just gone through the Leaving Cert cycle there and uh, yeah, so we, we really felt that having you in there can really actually bridge that gap that me and Chris, just because of our ages, we wouldn't be able to do. So mm-hmm. would you be able to just tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about what you've done in the last year and how your Leaving Cert went? Yeah, so uh, my name's Will. I study here at the, the Academy, um, as you know, but I'm yeah basically just in to talk about how students can use personal development to further their own Leaving Cert progress, because um, I've seen how it's worked for me, and I think it's like a, a really big thing that students aren't really taking advantage of when it comes to the Leaving Cert and uh, to life in general as well, it can be, can be very helpful. So I did my Leaving Cert last year in June, um, did reasonably well, you know, by conventional standards, um, got six H1s and uh, I'm now doing global business in, in DCU. Um, and yeah, I just think personal development and, and, and the concepts we'll discuss today were, were invaluable kind of on that path. And then tell me, did, how was your junior cert? What did you, how did you get on there? Uh, junior cert, I got seven A's, three B's, I think. Cool, so you, you completely, obviously the Leaving Cert steps up a level, but you stepped up a level, obviously massively as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so like what, what we have down here, we're saying about your Leaving Cert, like what did you find, what would you find, like maybe, even though you've, you've achieved, like you've done extremely well, I don't think you could do better. Could you, like... Well, yeah. you could. And we won't talk. Could. We won't talk about that. But okay, guys. So, what what did you find maybe difficult? Like, what would a student like out there now in the study room? What would they be finding difficult about their leaving cert currently? What did you find? Well, I think like everyone is a victim of of stress and pressure and all that that the leaving cert kind of brings. Because when you think about the leaving cert, it's essentially is it's a, like a zero sum game. There's only so many H ones they can really give out when you think about it. So that kind of like puts you in competition in comparison with everyone else that's doing it. And that brings on stress, brings on pressure. And the nature of it as well, it's like talked up as like, you fail this, you, you fail at life, you know, you're never going to get to do what you want to do. So it does bring stress, but like when you, when you analyze those feelings down, they're really just fear. fear. Fear of failure, fear of, you know, of negative feedback, fear of like embarrassment, fear of criticism. And that, you know, holds a lot of students back. Um, so when you're having those fears, I guess the, the main thing you do want to do is like break them down, just have a look at them. And one thing I would say is if you're, you know, having negative thoughts, like doubting yourself, saying, you know, everyone else is way better at me at, at X, you know, at maths, English, whatever it may be, like just sit for a moment and say, number one, is that true? Usually it won't be, but then if you're still telling yourself it's true, you say, number two, can I be absolutely sure that it's true? Generally, like, you, don't, you won't have any proof that, that your belief, your negative belief about yourself is actually true. Number three, you might want to say, well, if I believe this about myself, then what's the result? How, do I, how does it impact on the action I take? And how does it influence how I'm going to, you know, interact with other people or approach my leaving cert? And then four, you might say, like, you know, um, is there any evidence of the opposite? Is there any evidence that I actually am good at this? Is there any evidence that I can do well? And you probably will find evidence. So it's switching from that negative, you know, demeaning thought to something that's quite empowering. And a lot of the time we get stuck in the trap that we think, you know, if I think it, it must be true. When, you know, really that's not the case. It's a lot of like conditioning that's been happening to us without us even knowing it. So just like, I think that's very helpful for people to just break down the negative thoughts they're having about themselves and and uh, and try and instill some more positive things. Yeah, that, that's actually, that's so, so true that you said that. Like, so since I've been teaching, I actually genuinely get upset when I see 
how students actually talk themselves down and they're scared of talking themselves up. Mm. And anyone that even is doing well, even there's that, that kind of mentality of let's even pull them down even further. Yeah. And it's always talked about how it's going to be a hard year versus this is a year you can do very well in. This is a year mm. that you can excel. This is a year you can put a platform down for yourself. So I think you nailed it on the head there when you said it's like fear. Yeah. Uh, and like deep down, even no matter what the student says, if they're not arsed or if they're not, uh, if they had poor teachers beforehand or they don't know what they want to do. But deep down, when you actually t take away from that, it all kind of stems from fear of not doing well in it. And yeah, no, and, and a big one as well would be like fear of failure. Like you see a lot of guys would might be um, saying like, oh, like, you know, why bother trying or kind of playing off the whole, like, I don't really care. I'll, I won't study and I'll see how well I can do just, you know, showing up. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that stems from a fear of failure. Like if I, if they're scared, if they like try really hard and then they fail, like it says, they're, they think it says something bad about them, but I think it should really be flipped from like fear. There's there's two fear. They're like there's two pains in life: pain of discipline and, and pain of regret. Mm -hmm. That's you know what Jim Rohn says a lot of the time. He says you know discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons. So really, when you get to August, you're gonna be looking back and regretting that you didn't put in the work. Whereas the pain of a bit of discipline, like right now. It's not, you know, not com comparable to that, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. And tell us this, like, so would you have felt that, so you were setting off uh, 12 months ago now, say the Will Robbins 12 months ago, sitting in school, would you have, said, would you have said to yourself, or do you reckon you're, you're a little bit further along at that stage, would you have said, uh-oh, I'm a bit scared here, or I'm not sure, like, or I don't feel I'm going to do well, or I don't feel I have the tools to do well. Would you, was that, would you have been in that position or would that have maybe kept coming fifth or fourth year or something like that for you? Um, yeah, like, no, I definitely, everyone has doubts, I guess, and everyone doubts themselves sometimes. But I think it's, it's really about, if you think of your mind as a garden of sorts, um, like weeds are always going to grow, but you just kind of have to weed your garden um, every day if you can. And that's kind of removing those negative thoughts that are kind of holding you back. Obviously, you know, a big one for me was like just telling myself the whole time, I'm bad at maths, I'm bad at maths. Um, you know, I'm not just, numbers don't come easily to me. Like I wouldn't have been the best at maths. Um, but that kind of then materialized into poor enough results along the way. And it wasn't until I kind of like challenged that and was like, you know, why am I bad at, why do I, why do I say I'm bad at maths? Um, and why can't I, you know, improve at maths? that like my result did improve a little bit, still didn't obviously get the H1, uh, hence the 613, but um, like it did go up a lot. Yeah, yeah, man, still like it's an absolutely unbelievable score and like uh, that's, that's incredible and it's even better to, from, to say that from where you came from versus there's probably a couple of people out there now or maybe a few people listening to this that like they probably don't need a teacher, you know, they're gonna get a H1, but the story of coming from that to, to build that, I think that's, that's fantastic. What, um, what do you, what do you think like what specifically do you think like helped you and your leaving cert then like from at the very start when you set out at six year what like is there a certain before we fully get into your personal development stuff like what yeah. if you were to nail it down what helped you change you from obviously that's a very good junior cert but like to an incredible leaving cert what do, what do you reckon is the if you were to say one tool or one thing that someone could implement today that doesn't maybe potentially have a background and any of the stuff we're about to talk about in a few minutes time what could, what could they do um a very basic tool i would say if you know if we leave all, if we park all the the mindset stuff for for even a minute just having like a a study timetable like just getting that down i'm going to do x amount of hours this week and um, i'm going to be flexible enough around when i get it done but just on Monday I do like four hours or whatever it is, on Tuesday I do this, um, and I, I'm gonna get that amount of work done, you know, no matter what happens. You know, if something comes up, I'll, th I'll work around it, I'll do a little bit extra on the weekend. And just as well, when you're going into your study sessions, I used to do like sessions of an hour, small break, session of an hour, small break. Just having a goal for each session, so you have learning outcomes for each day, each week, and then on a longer term, like each month as well. And um, so you're actually being productive rather than just busy. 
like you're not you always ask yourself am i inventing things to do to feel productive and feel busy or am i actually getting things done and it helps just to have a little list there so you're checking off things and um, and yeah having set time set space where you do the work perfect what would, what would be an example of one year say you've an hour of study now what would have one of your goals been approximately like it um, yeah so like I do homework first and then say for history or something I would say okay this hour I am I'm gonna like craft this essay so I'm gonna look at all the information I'm gonna like write out this essay so be allowed to go on on the internet and whatever and then maybe and the next hour would be okay I'll memorize that and see if I can write the key points for memory and then after that I might go okay I'll time myself give myself 40 minutes which is what you get in the exam and see can I get it done in that time frame and if what do I forget and if and whatever I forget I'll like go over again after so that'd be basic enough example. Fantastic what, what, obviously because you obviously implemented that the entire year what, what what did you see other people potentially doing like maybe wrong or things that they could have done better in terms of like that sort of stuff for the day-to-day -day work without um, calling anyone out? Yeah, without calling anyone out, I think night study, there was a tendency to possibly, I know, uh, go on the phone a lot, chat. Um, and I think just when you, I just turn my phone off and put it outside the room, that's a big one. Because um, when you're getting interrupted by your phone all the time, it's just impossible to get in that deep work, that like flow state, um, if you want to call it. Like I read a thing, it says like when you're interrupted by a WhatsApp message, or whatever message takes you like 11 minutes to get back in like full concentration again so if you're constantly being interrupted by text messages you're just not going to get any meaningful work done and um, and yeah that's a big one i think people fall for is like having the phone in there with them it's yeah. a killer and that will compound then obviously if they're not getting it done then they'll probably have to do that same thing again yeah and again and again and then suddenly the the hours they spent is not actually taking off stuff like you had yeah. there it's it's kind of half-assed in it. Okay, that, that's that's unbelievable. Do you wish that you personally, even though you've done everything, do you, do you wish, is there anything still that you got under stress right now? Do you wish you've done anything different? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I think my problem was I almost became too much like trying to impress people or whatever with whatever work I was doing. So I'd have to be like the first in in the morning studying and I'd have to like even try and sound sad, like, I don't know, say like, oh, I did that many, like people get competitive about how mm. much study they're doing. And um, over Easter as well, definitely took it too far, like, and almost completely like burnt out, like totally. Um, cause I was doing, I was getting up at four and going for a run, then doing six hours of study, then going to the gym, then doing another six hours. And by the end of the two weeks, I was, you know, I was falling asleep at the desk. Um, have you ever had sleep paralysis? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I was. Where uh, the ghosts appear, yeah, the aliens and all. Taking, taking it. Uh, taking a nap one day, and I just got this really bad sleep paralysis for about half an hour, and I like thought I was being like possessed or something. And at that stage, I think I was like, okay, yeah, probably need to chill out a little bit because I think that was one of my least productive two weeks of study, just because I was like trying to just cram too much in mm -hmm. and obviously you need that time off as well so don't take it too far with the cramming like you need to approach study in a holistic way and i think when you're winning across the board and like health and fitness uh, family life whatever spiritual life and um, you find that your study um and your your results are going to jump as well like a win anywhere in your life is a win everywhere really yeah, yeah. No, I, I could completely relate to that. I remember when I first started training by well, myself after I stopped playing rugby, uh, I'd be like, oh, I'll go, I'll get up at this time, just to say to people almost like, oh, I was at the gym at X time, yeah. not getting my sleep in. And then I would go, I'm going to go gym later. But then actually those two gym sessions, I was really, really tired for both of them, not getting any productivity and trying to go every day. And like nothing really happened. Mm. You just wrecked the, the entire yeah. time. And energy is energy, I guess. So when you're saying the same with study, or you're saying the same with, with anything, like yeah. it's 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 important that you obviously have the rest. And that's interesting. You said that could have been potentially a, if if Easter wasn't uh, if Easter wasn't so Easter was early last year, wasn't it? So you'd a long into uh, the... no, it was, uh, 
was it late? I think it was a late one. Gee, so you could could have been a potential could have been potential disaster then. Could have been, yeah. If you had it burned out. Yeah. Yeah, mate. But oh, fair enough. And see, you realised that then. You basically were self aware enough to say that. Oh, uh oh, I'm uh, I'm making a few mistakes here. Yeah. I'm um, I need to rectify it. Did you just then take a couple of days off, or what did you do? Um. Yeah, I think I took I took the last weekend off then and then when i got back i was just i made sure i was getting enough sleep and made sure that like i wasn't you know burning the candle at both ends and yeah, yeah. you know giving myself a little bit of a, a break yeah that's that's cool and there's say for example the david lewis's of the world who say if you go back to the thing about your phone you're obviously quite self-disciplined and that sort of stuff but like you know i know it's fine for me you know it's that's fine i can I can go on my phone and study 11 minutes, and no, that's not true. What would you say to someone like that? Would you go back to the, the, uh, like, you know, those, the, I kind of get it with some people, and I definitely do it myself. It's like, ah, oh, it's okay for everybody else, but I'm slightly different. And that, would you have any, anything that you could say to someone like that? As in, like, they feel the, the phone thing doesn't well, impact like, them. Yeah, or they're making an excuse to saying, oh, I need it now because my, oh, my, my mum might have to text me to give me a lift home, or, or I, I needed to listen to music, or maybe in four hours I'm going to look at something in Spanish. Yeah. Or something like that. What, what would you say? It's just because I know we say it to kids all the time about the phones, and yeah. you know, they don't believe you, but what would you, no. say, what would you think? Um, I'd say, like, even if you just like say it to your mum or whatever, say, like, listen, I'm t putting my phone on airplane mode for this amount of time, like, I'm doing focused work, um, like, I won't be able to take texts. She probably understand, mm. and like um, I think with if you're looking something up genuinely, like it's it's grand, like a translation for a word um, or whatever. But you probably want to do all that at the start of the session and have that done, and then so you have all your materials that you need mm -hmm. um, for the session. And what some people do is like, have you heard of the twenty-five minute Pomodoro technique? You basically you have all your, the stuff that you're going to need for the um, for the study session and then you just do like a 25 minute timer mm -hmm. and you just focus on like kind of one task uh, for that 25 minutes and you know people tend to be a lot more productive when they just carve out these blocks of time where they've, they have no interruptions yeah. and they're just completely focused on one task so, but for people who want to go on their phone I guess it's not going to help you so mm -hmm. you know it's probably not the best idea to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just the saying, so you're in DCU now. Have you kept? Do you reckon you've kept your study protocol up in terms of global business? Um, have I? It's definitely not the same to the same extent as last year because I don't know. There's there's no exam that's going to be as hard as the leaving cert. Uh, I'm getting back into the swing of things now. There's definitely less work to do, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of different because there's not like a set like. Um, set amount of vocab or set amount of definitions you have to learn each week it's kind of more self-directed um, but yeah no I'm also you know experimenting with a few dis different uh, aspects of college life and uh, enjoying it though but yeah stay on top of things as well so yeah DCU is good isn't it yeah were you there I went, I went to DCU as well I went to Trinity and then I went to DCU Afterwards, so I just when I saw the yellow band there, brought me back. That's the tap you into the gym, isn't it? It is, yeah. Thank God, man. thank <laughs> God. Very, very good gym there. Uh, tell us this then. Um, so what? That, that's fantastic to, to hear about the leaving circle. Like the the, re, the main reason that I know you is because obviously you contacted Chris about personal development, and we were both blown away with your level of knowledge of it. And we, I always say, and I've said it to you, and I've definitely said it in this podcast before. I wish. I honestly wish that someone grabbed me by the scruff of the neck when I was 16 or 17 and started teaching me this stuff. Yeah. So instead of having to, like, say I've been into it coming from absolute scratch from like f for the last, like, say, four years and kind of dabbling in it myself, I wish someone had given me all the basics to start off with uh, to, to then spend the next 15 years actually working, getting better and better. Because I just know that it would have, like, obviously it's influenced my life already and my life is fantastic. But it just would have made school so much easier, college so much easier. I remember there was one summer where there was a few issues with repeats and stuff like that. Yeah. Just because I was immature and not organised and just simple stuff like that. This, um, And I know to anybody that takes any of this stuff on board, even the, the unbelievable nuggets you've said so far, it is profoundly going to help them in this year. Um, but like, how did you 
how did, how did you even get into it? Like, considering, like, I got into it because because yeah. Chris Lauder told me about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I see he's doing quite well, so maybe I should try to do that yeah. sort of stuff. And that's honestly how I got into it. Yeah. Um, what about yourself? Um, well, yeah, no, I definitely wasn't always into it. Um, so, like, first and... In second year, I guess what I had, what I guess you'd call like the, have you read Mindset by, by Carl Dweck? Yep. Yeah, so it would have been very much like fixed mindset, like, oh, like I'm not good at anything, like I'm not talented, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then I think it was kind of third year, I went to my dad's cousin for a study skills kind of session. And um, he also put like a study timetable in place for me and a plan. Um, and then we'd kind of meet every few weeks to discuss how it was going. And um, I kind of just, you know, I trusted him, bought into it and applied myself to it. And then doing, you know, a lot better in the junior cert than I had done in previous exams. I was kind of like, all right, OK, so, you know, the, the link between hard work and actually getting good results kind of started to form in my mind. So it was no longer like, oh, those people are lucky. They're like born smart or whatever it was like okay, work hard to get decent results. So I guess that kind of kind of instilled a bit more of a growth mindset. But it wasn't really until um, fifth year, we, were, we went in Gonzaga, we go on this spiritual kind of retreat. Um, and one of the activities on it was they asked us to do a thing called Look at Your Life movie. Um, and it was basically going before, they were asking you to, you know, before bed, go back over your life as if it was a movie and just just watch through it and and you know ask yourself how would I feel if you know I had a, a cinema full of like my fr fa uh, family and friends you know watching it with me and um, and I was kind of thinking like you know I've done some some decent stuff but I wouldn't like be overly proud of this movie like it, it's certainly not a masterpiece so like from then on I kind of decided like I want to make this like you know, a blockbuster hit, I guess. I want to be really proud of this life movie. And if I was going to, you know, die tomorrow, die today, like, what would I want people to say about me? Because, you know, we could die at any moment. We don't know. And we only have kind of one shot at this. So that was kind of my driving force. Like, right, you know, if, if I could die at any moment, what would I want my family to say about me? What kind of impact would I like to have on the world? Um, and that kind of led me down the path of looking to improve myself and improve my capability to uh, to have an impact on the world. Perfect. That's unbelievable. Tell me this: Why? Um, why do you reckon some people are willing to go to school from eight o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night, but not embrace before we get into them certain tools like making the personal development? setting themselves up for success, organisation, why are they not willing to do the, say, 10, 15 minutes, as we said, sharpen the axe? Yeah. Why do you reckon that is? Probably. Maybe like, I'm they, sure there was 100 yeah. people that went on that, on that tour. Yeah. But, like, they're probably off playing chess or whatever. They're not in here. You know, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. But they're not yeah. in here as, a, not, as an 18... How old are you again? Uh, 19. 19. You're a 19 year old man coming in yeah. here to chat to me about this. Why do you reckon it impacted you? Why do you reckon they would not? Uh, well, I think you know Chris touched on this in, in one of your first podcasts uh, that there is kind of that stigma around it, or you know people look at you a bit funny when you talk about personal development. And um, I guess people don't see the value in it. They say, you know, why are you sacrificing this time? You could be actually getting stuff done. Like for most people, um, they say like they look at the amount of stuff they got done each day or the amount of hours they put in as you know that was a good day that was a good day's work but you really want to judge each day by the seed you sow not like the harvest you reap so i think by spending that extra 15 20 even an hour in the morning you are gonna you know your life is gonna increase exponentially you might not get more done in that moment so but so you know someone might get an extra hour of, of study done on you but over time you're gonna improve so much more that you know the difference between you and that person is going to be huge but i guess you know it doesn't it doesn't the results you get from personal development don't materialize today they come to you in about you know six months time a year's time and they compound over time so when people don't see that immediate gratification they probably lose hope but you know when you when you stick it out these things compound and as you know like 
it's uh it's quite a rewarding path as well yeah yeah do, do you think then so it's kind of like a symptom of certain things at the moment that are going on it's like you know everyone wants everything like right now right yeah. now as you said because it's so, over such a long period mm. Mm, not really arsed in that yeah yeah i was like you didn't like the gonzaga joke there it's only a mess I'm big, yes, big, yeah. big, fan, big fan of Gonzaga, especially yeah, after we just last won, year. Uh, we just won our sixth uh, Millfield Championship in a row. So the uh, Millfield, yeah, unreal, man. Unreal. Is that is that is that's the chess one? That is like the the chess uh, senior cup, essentially. Yeah, but it's in it's in uh, England, so it's a big one. Yeah, I right. actually played rugby in Millfield before. Oh, did you? Uh, was, have you been there? Uh, no. No, it's one of the greatest uh, second. I don't know what you call it, secondary schools, yeah. high schools I've ever seen. Um, we played against Millfield and, and not the not the uh, yeah we lost fourteen nil but their starting prop was Mako Vunapola do you know him Lions yeah. and Reese Ruddock was playing as well for uh, uh, for Millfield oh okay because uh, he he's from Wales and he went to the college there and anyway I'm getting a bit off track were you I, I think Jamie Joseph played as well well anyway we all talk about <laughs> that we all got, was I what sorry were you in rock or no 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 I uh, my parents didn't like me and they sent me to CBC okay nobody uh, asked they loved me I was a fantastic school we had a great great time there uh no yeah so no it was it was great we got to go over to Millfield it was fantastic and yeah no great the uh sorry for getting off track there uh the the next thing is uh, like I said so that's how that's how you got into it and then we we're kind of saying okay people again if they don't see the value in it so like you 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 first got into it that way what was like the first like so after you realize wait a second i'm getting results from this 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 person that i'm buying into to help me is actually like he's showing me this stuff so i can help myself further yeah. what was then the first thing after the junior cert the, the like first thing that you did by yourself or the first person you went to meet after that or the first book or the first or anything yes yeah, like so um after i guess that kind of um awakening of sorts on the kind of spiritual uh retreat I just started to immerse myself in, you know, just work my way methodically through the, the health, self-help section. Um, so, you know, the classics like The Alchemist um, was probably the first one I read. Very accessible, um, I think, for anyone who's, like, who's new to the whole thing. Um, and it just kind of instilled, again, that, that, uh, that vision of, like, of a life's mission, a life's journey. Um, so that was very impactful. Then, of course, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Joint Within. Um, the secret, you know, there's some stuff in there like I wouldn't fully uh, support, but the whole idea that like your thoughts determine your reality um, was again like a, a game changer and that was kind of reinforced then. I read Think and Grow Rich um, and those kind of books. And then- This is while you're on school? Yeah, oh, wow. so I think then it was coming up to 2018, so then I set 30 of those kind of books that I wanted to read in the next year and I'd just be kind of reading on the Lewis on the way into school uh, and uh, way home and stuff at, at night as well so uh, they, they just I guess when you're reading you're reading for the concepts but you're also reading for the mental models that you kind of then adopt um, and it's you just kind of start viewing the world in a whole new way um, and as again, as Chris said in an earlier podcast, when your beliefs start to shift, you then tap into more of your potential. You take, you know, bigger action, more, more uh, bolder action, and then your results start to continue to improve as well. And that just feeds right back into your belief about what you can achieve. And um, so I guess it is, it's a virtuous cycle then once you're kind of on, on the path. But um, definitely for someone who's trying to get started, I'd say, the Alchemist is is a great one. It's probably the book I've gifted to the most people as well. That's that's actually that's the Will Smith's favorite one, isn't it? That's the one he talks yeah, about. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I've I've actually read it as well. But then like it's a it's a story as well, isn't it? It's not yeah, like it's a, a narrative. Yeah. 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 So it's not like so for a student that's like so I'm not reading that much. It's actually an, it's a it's a good story as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that that's brilliant. So that would be the first one you'd suggest. Yeah, and then I'd say. Even for someone who's not big into reading, just look up Tony Robbins on, on YouTube and uh, you'll get some gems as well. Yeah. Sure you, are you you're a Tony Robbins fan? You yeah, I actually went to see him in London uh, 2017. Uh, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. I thought it was very, very good. Was uh, it different, uh, the live experience? Or? Uh, yeah, so like I was, it was a bit awkward. I went by myself. Uh, yeah. 
I stayed with my cousin actually made me go. He was uh, he used to work on the have you ever you ever seen all the events and they have the security guards yeah. there either side. So he used to actually work as one of those security guards. Like he had his own business, but that's that's what he wanted to want to do. So he got into that and he I rang him about uh I rang him about what was it, about four years ago and I was like, I am I'm not entirely sure about what I'm doing and where I want to go and he said just go to that event, like just yeah. make sure you go to that event and, and give it a shot and I was like I can't afford it and he was like he said you know you can't so you, you have to go so I, basically I, I had to go and then I had to like take off work and stuff like that and I went over and I actually didn't know I was getting myself into because I went in and people were like just walking and people are high-fiving you and stuff like that and I was so awkward yeah and you have to throughout the whole like it was uh, four days and I don't mean four like eight hour days I mean four from like well the first day was nine until 3 a.m in the same spot like obviously there was a lunch break but that was yeah. it and it was like doing activities all the time and i was i was uh i was pretty out of my comfort zone and yeah. then you'd walk across the fire and stuff like that was this uh, uh unleashed power within was it or uh, yeah. yeah yeah so no, i was I'd lo I'm, i am going to go back to one yeah. again uh because i say every time you go back i'm sure it's quite similar stuff but i think when you as you said you're going with a different mindset you're asking different questions and suddenly you're getting different answers and you're mm making different plans but uh as long with an answer it was yeah. class <laughs> yeah so uh no fantastic what what do you reckon say if i was a student i'm a i'm an 18 year old student now and you you've given me that book but if i wanted to just some personal development because it doesn't always have to be about study if i wanted to like organize it because i i find that most students find it hard to organize themselves and a lot of their problems come from a lack of organization whether they realize it or not what 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 could they break the areas their life down into for personal development? Yeah, so um, I'd say health and fitness, number one, because um, that's probably the most important, as you, as you know, uh, yourself. Um, so obviously that encompasses like diet, training. And, Mate, you know, you've, just, you've just put up those detectors there. Now, as a student, you said diet and training. I'm kind of having like, a, oh, yeah, no, it's fine for you. Can you explain a little bit more about what you mean exactly? Well, you know, you're probably more uh, more um, yeah, so qualified what, to speak in this what, field, but um, well, when I speak about when I say, oh, you got to match your diet, they're like, I'm not, I don't, not, not, I'm not dining for something. They kind of, yeah. you know, they kind of throw it away. So yeah, well, like yeah, I'd, I'd say people have the wrong conception about diet. It's like whatever you put in your body is is really going to have a profound impact on on how you feel and how you perform as well. So for anyone, you know, tackling the leaving cert, just eating healthy um you know whatever that is for you i uh i do a lot of you know experiments myself with with various diets probably not something that a lot of these students are going to take on board like whatever um ketogenic uh diets or whatever but even just upping your protein intake um trying to go higher fat i found was very good for my mental performance mm. um and cutting out first number one like cutting out just a load of the the processed whatever carbohydrates and and chocolates and i know it's, it's tempting to go for the energy drinks but cutting them out as much as possible as well and mm -hmm. um, is probably the first step and uh, you'll feel like 10 times better yeah and I, I you, any thoughts in that regard or i i i definitely agree with you i think that like uh well first of all when you say protein i know that most of the people listening to this are thinking or more powder and stuff like that. But we mean like meat and eggs yeah. and that sort of stuff. Uh, I think definitely the the idea of having more fats for your, your brain. Yeah. So if you if you're showing up, say for a soccer game or a rugby game or whatever you're showing up for, you know you want to have the most amount of energy available inside your muscles. So you eat a certain way for that. You know yeah. people talk about you know carb loading before games yeah. and that sort of stuff. So like what if you're trying to think and use this yeah. and you want that to be the ultimate, well then you surely should feel that too. Yeah. So yeah. that was a good way. And definitely I found this is crazy, man. Over the at the start of the summer I decided to just give up sugar completely. Just yeah. for the just for a go. I don't even eat that much sugar. Yeah. Like I remember I said it to someone in the staff room, they're like, You don't eat sugar. I was like, Well I actually do. Because yeah. I used to drink my wadi so much of it. I would have those protein uh, shakes and then I would have like some dark chocolate and stuff and I, but i would have be having it throughout the day and then i the odd time i'd have like say a diet coke i know it's not like sugar yeah but i gave it up and for the first three days i had massive headaches like crazy headaches and like i couldn't really concentrate and then like day four came and it kind of it went away and i found in my training like actually in my training I, when i was doing stuff at the time 
I just get this random burst of energy, usually where I kind of be tired. Yeah. It would just appear out of nowhere. It was like you get a second wind, and, mm. and so God knows what it would have done for my mental performance if I was studying. Mm. I then found um, out of nowhere, sometimes I'd just be walking down the road, and it was like you said earlier, your thoughts, like you're not necessarily your thoughts, they're not necessarily true, true. it's something that pops into your head. I'd honestly get, it's literally someone as if someone was whispering in my ear, yeah, just go get a Diet Coke in the shop. Or I get a Diet Coke in my or I get a piece of chocolate. It's like, as if, because my body was obviously craving it. Yeah. And it said it, but I was like, it was honestly, I had to go, no. And it was a bit <laughs> weird, but then after a certain while, it was, it was great. It was un unbelievable. And then yeah. I remember on a Sunday, two weeks into it, I had a, I, I actually went and just had like a normal my body drink because I was like, on oh, Sunday, I'm going to have it. Yeah. And I went for a run and came back and my mouth was sore because there's so much, there was so much sugar in it. Yeah. And I wasn't used to it. So, yeah, I'd, I know people don't have to go that extreme. Yeah. But when you, but when you see them eating massive, like if you see someone eating a big bag of Doritos and that's trying to fuel them for 16 hours worth of, yeah. like it's like a full-time job of studying, or like in school and then studying and all the social aspects and still feel happy around the, on the outside mm. of it, which is obviously massively important. It's, yeah, I think it's something a lot of students don't get on top on. And like, even if they don't want to go that far down the rabbit hole of, you know, researching what is the, the ultimate diet, I think like, well, first of all, experimenting what works for them. Mm. Like for me, like I, I go, I just, I've, I've given up um, carbs just for my body. It kind of works mm -hmm. um, better. But like even for someone just to cut out those, like the, the absolute crap, like the Doritos and stuff, and um, will have a profound impact on how you feel, mm. like, sugar. Yeah. So, sorry, I, so I, I went off again there because I, I needed you to say that. Yeah. So it wasn't just coming from me, yeah. even though I went on a rant there myself. Yeah. So we, what? No, I mean, so, <laughs> so we have, uh, so we use had diet and training and, uh, and so the other areas that you feel that we could break it up into? Um, yeah, I think so. That's obviously number one because a win there is going to spread like everywhere. You can have more energy to, to attack every other area. And then you have like your, your intellectual life, like the, the thoughts you think, you have your emotional life, so how do you feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, your character, that's kind of like, that's a deeper one, I guess. It's like, what, what, what do you stand for? Do you have a, a sense of mission in your life? Like, is there a, a bigger guiding reason behind um, why you're doing what you're doing? And I guess that's something people have to, to think about a little bit as well. Um, then I would say relationships, family relationships are huge um your social life um and then i guess your your overall quality of life like are you getting out in the sun are you you know getting in nature you know going for swims or like when i started going for my, my morning swims down on there's a beach in black rock um and doing a lot of my uh kind of sprint workouts outside i just felt like you know just 10 times happier I don't know what it was I think just something about being in nature is just uh, really like lifts your moods and just overall quality of life balance like getting enough sleep and um, I think once students can kind of see that it's not just about how many hours you're getting done but it's actually about optimizing across like that whole range of things um, and you know having them all congruent and all focused towards you know bring that best version of yourself to the exams in June, and then, you know, their performance will skyrocket. Yeah, nice. T tell me this, um, obviously, you're still doing all this sort of stuff now. Yeah. And it's probably way different to what you did in school. What would a typical, now you don't have to remember the classes, so let's just say Tuesday or Wednesday look like for, for you? In sixth year. In sixth year. Um, so yeah, I would wake up at 5 a.m. and then... Um, well, Will, that's too early for me. It's too early for you. No, it? but like, what if a kid's... Like a kid's oh, okay, yeah. Well, you know, you don't have to, to really wake up at 5 a.m. Um, that was just what worked for you in terms of the time? Yeah, like I think I was doing a bit of reading that like people have different chronotypes. So that's like sleep types. So like whatever hours of whatever, you know, getting up early, um, going to bed early, that personally works for me, I'm an early mm -hmm. riser. Um, for some people, they get their best work done at night, so you know, I'm not going to stop someone um, you know, burning the midnight oil and uh, just, just about scraping, getting school on time, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as I think you know, in the morning you're setting, you're, you're setting yourself up for a win basically by having a morning routine, I think everyone should have a morning routine. So, 
So sorry, um, go back to your yeah, when five? I got up, yeah, I got up. Um, I would have uh, something we spoke about the last day was morning cocktail. Yeah. So just really simple water, um, sea salt, um, a bit, a bit of lemon. Um, I put a bit of apple cider vinegar in there. I don't know if you've tried that out. Yeah. Well, not. since our last chat, I started doing it, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, st I'm still getting used to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, it's quite taste. Yeah. Uh, then I would do five minutes journaling. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's something you've dabbled in at all now or... Uh, a little bit, but I wouldn't have done it for the like five minutes talking about stuff, but I yeah. definitely talk about stuff I was grateful for in that book. You yeah. did that in six here? Um, I did, yeah. And what, um, what would you talk about in that? Like, obviously not personal stuff, but like how you're feeling and... Yeah, it would be more, uh, you kind of use prompts, so like three things that I'm grateful for, um, three things that would, if they happened, make today great. Um, then um, who can I who can I serve today? So kind of you know when you're focusing on making other people happy, you tend to be you know a hell of a lot happier yourself. And um, and then there's uh, what else? Anyway, it's a, it's called a five minute journal. I encourage people to look it up. And um, but even just asking those kind of positive questions again, like we were saying, puts you in that positive mind frame. Um, just going into the day. Then something um, that I really found very uh, enlivening was um, either I'd either have a cold shower, three minute cold shower, or I'd go for a swim down on my local beach. Um, just any kind of cold exposure has, you know, a load of health benefits like reduced inflammation, um, increased fat burning, um, and increased and reduced like cortisol stress levels. Uh, increased mental performance, mental clarity, and as well, like I think one of the main benefits is there's not a morning like you go to the shower or you go to the sea and you say, oh yes, I wanna, I wanna jump in here, I wanna turn this all the way to cold. But I think it's it's good to practice that mental override, like saying, you know, I don't really want to do this, but I know it's gonna be good for me and I'm gonna feel great after, so I'm gonna, you know, switch that nozzle and uh, and get under the cold. And it's kind of a, a good muscle to build, like in sixth year when, you know, you might not want to do the extra hour of study, but you're gonna say, listen, I know it's gonna be the best thing for me, and, and mm -hmm. um, I guess it's kind of that kind of character is built through mm -hmm. just small things every day, like uh, having a cold shower. Then um, after that, I would meditate for 10, 15 minutes, and um, the way I started was just looking up on YouTube guided meditations. Um, and I think one of the some of the best ones would be uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, if you want to look him up. Him up, um, really good stuff on kind of he calls it rewiring your brain, just setting positive intentions for the day. Um, or there's a good one called uh, Abundance Meditation by Bob Proctor. Um, and yeah, they're just the ones that I liked. But even but, but say the meditation there, not spiritual will. Yeah. So why would you meditate? What does that do? As opposed, because I know that straight yeah. away. I, I do it. I yeah. think it's unbelievably powerful. But I'm just saying from a kid's point of view. Well, what what would it do for them? What what did it yeah. do for you? What did it do for me? Well, yeah. No, I think meditation that way probably is a bit of a marketing problem because when I say meditation, everyone's probably thinking of, you know, some some old woman with a dream catcher and uh, you know running mm. around, eating um, macadamia nuts or whatever. But um, I think what meditation does is it, it's just practicing observing your thoughts and practicing focus, you know, when it doesn't matter, say you're on your couch, in your bedroom, um, to help you for when it, when it is going to matter. So if you think about an athlete, if they can't control their body, can't control their limbs, you know, they're not going to be much good. Um, it's the same thing, we're, we're kind of this year, we're mental athletes in six year. We have to be able to focus on the task at hand. So by meditating, you're kind of learning to gain control of your thoughts so that when you're you know doing a really hard maths problem or you really need to focus on some study you know you're not distracted by whatever you know fear desire those kind of thoughts are going on in your mind you can kind of choose to ignore them and and build up that uh that kind of practice so that's the main benefit of meditation i'd say brilliant yeah no no i, I fully agree i definitely agree and being there at the time being yeah. able to like as you said, like if you have the 25 minute practice, you know this is what your essay you're planning and study, 
and you're actually there and you're doing it and you give it to the best of your ability. Mm. So, no, it's fantastic. So after the meditation, what's next? What's next? Um, then I would uh, hop on the dart into uh, Fly Fit in town um, in Macken Street mm -hmm. and or, yeah, any of them really. And uh, go to the gym and then I'd get the bus into school mm -hmm. and I'd be in there for around, yeah, just before half eight, school starts. Perfect then, so you've set yourself up for basically, if you think about it, everything you said at the start of the podcast that would have distracted somebody or not without calling people out, Yeah. you have actually set yourself up in a positive way for those things not to happen or if, like instead of like being distracted to be focused instead of being tired to have energy instead of having cortisol to the stress levels gone down because yeah. of the, the water, cold water or whatever you decide to do yeah. unbelievable really really good and then school was school and then you would after school study I, I guess so you said homework and then planning your study based on a daily goal yeah so um i would try to do four hours um per weekday mm -hmm. and then you know obviously a good bit more on the weekend but obviously it was it was good coming here as well mm -hmm. um so i do my homework um i was in here a good few days a week and um, but on the days i wasn't it'd be you know home eat uh and then just do an hour session maybe five ten minute break another hour and uh you know keep going until four hours we're done and then um what did you do before, to chill out for bed yeah i guess um just have a chat with my family or go for a short walk and um, again like this is all kind of you know it sounds great sometimes you're gonna say ah fuck that like i, ju I just want to go on my phone and like you know it it, it, it is hard in 60 to carve out time to uh to sharpen the saw as we said um, but I think you know going for a walk in the evening is is really good um, just to to relax a little bit um, and then before bed as well I would also get out my journal again and uh, I would write you know three amazing things that happened today um, and then three things I could improve upon the next day you know where, so where was I not? getting better yeah at enacting your plan exactly yeah and um, as well, like I think when when you know people, so for someone who's quite focused, I think there is the tendency to to be your own worst enemy and like be just really hard on yourself and say, you know, that was a, you know, that like I didn't get anything done today. But when you actually say you sit down and say three amazing things that happened today, kind of like it does force you to you know be grateful for for everything that did happen and to to give yourself a little bit of credit because like if you're constantly just punishing yourself. Um, you know that's not you're not going to last the full year you know you want to give yourself a bit of a pat on the back at the end of the day and say you know that was actually a pretty successful day in, in the life yeah do you, know, do you know what it is with that as you say that like even like I, when I first started setting goals for myself yeah I remember on a sheet of paper in my room I wrote down like these goals for the year and they were fine like they were goals or whatever and I was like okay cool and I just only spent like 20 minutes on them and I remember it being four months into the year and uh, I was cleaning my room and I found them and I was honestly cleaning my room I was like my room is a disgrace I can't believe this is a joke and trying to figure all this stuff out and I was saying I, I can't believe I haven't done anything this year I haven't done anything at all and I actually looked at that list and the goals were fine but I'd actually completed every single one of them uh, but mentally I was like to myself I haven't done anything and yeah. I, th I suggest students might go home maybe they're not hitting the day 100% you're never hitting the day 100% never, nobody never. is yeah but then they're like, oh, I could have done that better versus, well, they just sat in eight classes. You know, they prepared their notes well or whatever they yeah. did well. So giving yourself, again, a positive reward, yeah. not, not, a, not an excuse or something like that, but like a positive, like saying, yeah, no, fair play, fair play, David, or fair play, Will, or fair play, yeah. whoever it is. I think that's, that's crucial. Yeah, no, definitely. Because like, if you're ever studying you write out a list of whatever you want to get done you never get all of it done and it, it does kind of carry over um but you do want to give yourself credit at the end of the day for like what you have gotten done and you know typically it is it is a lot and, it, and it's uh you know something to be proud of as well mm -hmm. and then as well then before before going to bed i'd have another cold shower and um and then go into bed i actually put on these kind of positive affirmations and um, just to kind of fall asleep to. It's called Wayne Dyer. I don't know if you've heard of him. 
um, and it's kind of just, I guess it's trying to like, I don't know if it works, but it's, it's meant to, you know, get the, those positive thoughts into your like, subconscious mind as you're drifting off. Mm -hmm. um, but I do find it kind of helps me to get to sleep and uh, I wake up feeling, feeling uh, you've, good. You do the cold shower just before bed? Yeah, I actually, you know, some, a lot of people think, you know, that'll wake you up a little bit, but uh, I found it has improved my sleep. Yeah. So I, I track my sleep using, um, we were talking about the last day, the, those whoop bands. Yeah, yeah, you got it, yeah. yeah. How's it going? Oh, it's good. Um, actually, it broke today, so not not ideal, but uh, I'm trying to fix it. Yeah. But uh, it gives you like a rating every night after you've and slept. Of, and, 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 and then of your recovery and stuff as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really because I was, I was obviously following the, the Joe Rogan one yeah. of his recovery and stuff yeah. again. I, I don't have the whoop band, but I have. I was using the Sleep Cycle app. Yeah. And I've actually noticed when you actually judge your quality versus how you feel the next day, and I know it seems obvious, but the difference in person that shows up when I'm at the 80, 90% sleep quality versus the 60%. Yeah. And even if I even noticed if I get like a one day a couple of weeks ago, I got 100%, I think on the Sunday. And then on the Monday, I got like 50% sleep quality, but I was still good on Tuesday, probably because of the, yeah. the, the day before. Now, obviously, there's a carryover, but it's, I, couldn't be, I couldn't believe. I, I, you, you obviously know it, but you just never correlated in your head yeah. to going back. I and do. Yeah, like there is a tendency, I guess, in sixth year to like, I don't know, cut down on it, try to get more study done. I was a big culprit for that because um, I think I can kind of manage on not that much sleep, but... It's kind of like a fool's economy, really. You're you're not showing up with the same intensity, mm -hmm. um, and you might get maybe an extra hour study done, but the quality of that hour like is is not going to be as good as if you were like fully rested. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're we're designed to work like lions. You know, go out for a hunt. You know, smash it, and then you know rest and recover. Not yeah. like uh, you know just picking at work all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic, unbelievable. What? So uh, tell us then. What so we we'll probably have we'll probably only you have a couple more minutes, do you? Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Do, if um, tell us this then, do like say outside school. So school's gone. We've we've broken it up. We've showed some simple steps. We've shown what or how you broke up your life. We showed an extreme morning routine. We did. Uh, like yeah. you know, but in a good way, like yeah. in a positive way. Like the best, like probably the best I've ever heard. Definitely the best I've ever heard of a student in terms of setting themselves up for success and what they want to do. What. What do you do now? Like, what is there? Like, obviously, you've massive goals compared because it's carried over from the leaving search. What, what are you looking? Like, maybe you don't know. But what's like your? Like, I don't know. Do you have like a five-year goal or a ten-year goal? Or just, you just want to get through college and do ex experience loads of different things. What, what, what do you want? Um, or do you know? Yeah, no. I think I try to think about it more as in like six-month kind of blocks or like experiments so right now um i'm running a marathon in uh, early november the double eighth of november and uh, no that was booked out so uh -huh. i've had to venture down to to mayo where is um, that nobody has it has a guy got it <laughs> yeah um and uh, yeah no out of my comfort talk about getting out of my comfort zone yeah Brilliant. getting out of, out of dublin um but yeah no so i'm doing that i do you need a visa for that <laughs> no, no, sorry, go, on, go, on, go. On. Um, yeah, and um, I guess just you know doing well in college. I'm working on a uh, a social enterprise. Um, for have you heard of the Enactus uh, competition? It's um, it's basically a social enterprise competition. So a few years ago, I was over in Zambia, uh, building houses, and um, I kind of you know since then I've been fundraising. So that's what the marathon's for. And um, during sixth year, I started a kind of a clothing company where I was I designed hoodies and sold them, and then gave the profits back to this orphanage over there. Wow. Um, so at the moment, I am trying to establish um, a small little factory over there. So it, that's more of a long term goal, I guess, um, to make use of basically. There's one billion tons of banana stems wasted every year in the world when they, they're just thrown out, when they actually could be used to make um, a really good sustainable fabric that's a lot better for the environment than, say, the synthetic fibers that we do wear. Um, so the plan is to, to make use of those and pay 
um, Zambian and African farmers, you know, good money for that for them, giving them a, an extra source of revenue, um, employ kind of local people over there in the um, in extraction of these stems into, you know, fiber, and then, you know, make garments and sell them over here to, to uh, consumers who are increasingly hungry for uh, sustainable clothing. Um, and the name for that is Ripe. It's on the horizon. Um, it's, you know, taken, obviously, it's going to be difficult to establish, but uh, hopefully with the whatever personal development stuff we have here, that it's uh, it's not out of reach. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and, and you're 19. I'm 19. Yeah. Bloody hell. <laughs> Didn't you feel bad or... No, what, sure, you, what I have, have you done? I haven't done anything yet, so it's it's yeah. still still a, a dream, but it hopefully it become reality. And is yeah. that why you did, why did you decide to pick global business, and why did you decide to pick DCU? Um, I guess the the global business course in DCU is the is the one that appealed to me the most because it has um, two years over in America, um, in Boston. So that I thought that was kind of cool. And um, global business, yeah, I've always been interested in business. Um, you know, been reading Fortune magazine and listening to to various business podcasts for a long time. So I guess I kind of just felt like you know, business was you know always what I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, I'm loving it so far. So um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, why DCU though? Just because that's where just it was. Because that course, yeah, 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 yeah it cool. Appealed to me more than the other business courses. Unbelievable. In the other yeah. Places, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, do you mind if I ask you a couple of quick questions just yeah. at the end? And you've got to come out with the answer straight away. Yeah. Is that okay? Do you yeah, feel awkward you. about this? No, no, it's last. No, I won't ask getting weird, I swear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Best book? Best book. Um, Mate, that's a tactic. To, 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 you got to say it quick. <laughs> you got to say it quick. Um, Siddhartha by Herman Hess. Okay, fantastic. I, I, you told me that the last day. Yeah. It's actually on my list now. Yeah. Many, many of the things that you said are on my list. and. Uh, the apple cider vinegar is making me into a new man. Has it, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's that's fine. Best podcast? Uh, the Tim Ferriss Show. Tim Ferriss Show. Particular guest? If you're thinking about a guest, like a specific podcast, I'd say Naval Ravikant on the Joe Rogan experience, actually. Naval, yeah. yeah. I actually follow his Twitter as well. Yeah, he's good. He, he's to the point. He tells he is, you exactly. Yeah. He's direct, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Okay, and then and then tell me this: what, uh, how long is your marathon going to take? Under four hours. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Why did you decide to do a marathon? Um, I guess the challenge. Um, but I guess I wanted to raise money as well for the uh, the orphanage as well. Yeah. Um, and I wanted, you know, I was listening to a lot of those kind, you know, David Goggins types, and I thought, you know, personal they, hero if, of mine. If, if they can run whatever two hundred miles, then you know, the least I can do is run, you know, a marathon. And I want to get into more endurance sports as well. Like I want to do the, you know, the Dunleary the triathlon the triathlon thing next year. Daily. Um, need to learn how to swim first, but sure. That's probably always, always that's probably next important. Year, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. Now that's really good. Is there anything else do you think that is beneficial that I haven't touched on today that you? Uh, no, I think we've we've covered some some good ground. Yeah, mate. That was that was fantastic. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. Uh, some of the stuff you've done is absolutely incredible. Unbelievably organised, unbelievably driven. Obviously, a very, very good guy. Uh, thanks so much for coming in, Will. And thanks sorry, for having me. And sorry again about that, that joke. Oh, any, listen, now that the lads will be uh, the lads will be calling in, complaining, trying to report the page. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. No. Great, Will. Thanks so much. Thank you. And uh, sure, if we we'll probably have you in again soon to talk yeah, about something maybe lovely. even more direct. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thanks, man. Appreciate that.